How's it going, YouTube? It's APOC. Today, I'm going to show you how to have face stretch and the beard add or remove model running at the exact same time. So this was a question asked on the forums here by Flashbacker. They say they know how to do them both, but not together. So I'm going to show you right now. I'm starting from the beard addition removal template that's on the Lens Studio website. You can go to learn templates and then machine learning, ML templates library, scroll all the way down to the bottom here and grab it from there. So this is what the project looks like when I first open it. I'm going to explain a little bit about how it works and just go through the whole camera process here just so you can see what we're doing. And if you want to make changes in the future, you'll kind of know what to do. So the first thing to look at is under beard resources, under textures, we have this beard face crop texture. A face crop texture lens studio basically cuts out kind of a square where your face is. So it'll take like this area. It's just a smaller texture. Instead of inputting this whole camera feed, we only need to actually take a square that has the face in it to run the ML one. So it's input texture is a vice camera texture, which is your regular camera feed from your phone with nothing added. And then it's cutting out a square from that that has your face within that square centered in it usually. So, and then this beard face crop texture is put into the ML component here as an input. Then this ML component runs its stuff. It's either the add model or the remove model, depending on which one you have added in there. It puts its stuff onto that image and then outputs that as a different texture called the output texture. This output texture in this project is then rendered onto this orthographic camera as an image right here. They're also doing some blending, I believe, with this material. Um, so you don't really need to touch anything here, but that's where the output texture goes. Then this camera here is rendering onto render target. If we go to our scene config, we can see the capture target is just getting the raw feed of this orthographic camera. The live target is getting the feed of this camera. This camera has some buttons. So for phones that don't perform well enough to run this in real time like it is right now, those phones will have an option to take a picture and then the ML is just applied on that still image so it's not constantly running over and over. That's all the live camera does, it adds the buttons to do that. This live camera has its own render target, live render target, which is being used as the live target. But what's important to note is that under default textures here, the live render target is taking the render target as an input. So it's just adding these on top of this camera's feed. So no matter what, you're actually seeing the feed of this camera, either with these buttons added on or without. So that's how we know where to apply the face stretch. We have to apply the face stretch on top of this feed. So we're going to intercept this by making it a separate render target. So the output image is going to be rendering on its own render target. Now let's click on render target here, add new render target. Click back on your resources here, go all the way to the bottom, click on that once and right click on it and choose rename. We're going to call this beard output. Now, we don't need to change the live camera's input from render target because we're just going to be changing what render target sees. Render target, after we make these changes, will see the beard output with the face stretch applied on top of it. So then that will be rendered onto our camera feed in the capture and onto this camera, which will be rendered into the live feed. So now we need to make a camera to apply that face stretch on. So just choose add in your objects, choose face effects, face stretch. And we want to put this on its own layer just to be safe and not mess anything up. So click the dot here that's blue, click add new layer and click on layer one. You can choose multiple layers for a camera to render. So you need to make sure you uncheck the first one. Now change your face stretch to also be applied on that layer. By default, this should render onto render target. If for some reason you change that on accident or whatever, make sure you change this back to render target. Now, we need this camera to actually take that with beard render target we have for the beard output. So to do that, we need to change our clear color option here. So click on your camera, clear color option will be here, change that to texture. So now the input to this camera will be a texture. That texture is going to be our beard output camera. So now this camera takes the beard output in, applies anything it has in here, which will be our face stretch. So we can add our face stretch now. As you can see, it's working. 
and then it outputs that to render target, which is then output outputted onto your screen. Or in the case of when it's on the live mode, it's outputted into this camera, then this camera adds the buttons and then renders that feed onto your phone. So that's how it works and it's done. If you've been following along, it's literally just this face stretch and intercepting that feed. Thank you guys for watching. If you need any help, comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.